Welcome to the Elevate Podcast, brought to you by the Registered Master Builders, where we're all about building better businesses. Each week, we explore the ideas and practices that help us get the best from our businesses, our teams, and ourselves. I'm your host, Ryan Castle, along with Dr. Mike Ashby. We talk to experts, advocates, and business owners in the construction industry to share their knowledge, insights, and experiences to help you build a better business and enjoy a better life. In addition to the podcast, the Registered Master Builders Elevate is also an online learning platform hosting courses, programs, and content that help construction business owners and their staff to build a better business. Now let the business building begin. Alrighty, welcome along to this episode of the Master Builders Elevate podcast. Delighted to be joined again by David Kelly, uh, Chief Executive of the Master Builders. Welcome along, David. Yeah, g'day, Ryan. How are you? Doing very well. Thanks for joining in with us from Wellington today. I thought it might be uh, interesting for our audience just to uh, know you a little better, so I've got some some fast fact questions for you. You okay with that? Yeah, go for it. Okay, oh, here yeah. we go. Preferences. Are you a breakfast or a dinner person? Uh, dinner person. Dinner and milk chocolate or dark chocolate? Dark chocolate. On holiday, would we find you bungee jumping or in the pool lounger? Neither. Neither? Neither. Uh, what, what would you be doing on holiday? Yeah, I'm not someone who uh, sits around by the pool or on the beach. I like to get out and do things, but I'm not really a bungee jumper. I love uh, history, architecture, understanding nice. the cultures of the places and good food. Awesome. That sounds like a great, great combo. Now, would you prefer to be in trainers or dress shoes? Trainers. And would we find you reading a real book or one on a Kindle? A uh, real book, yeah. Okay, real book, like, like to hold the real thing. Good, good. Yeah, yeah, and it. now this is the big important question, cats or dogs? Cats, cats for me. Oh, yeah. oh okay, we're, we're not seeing eye to eye on that one, but that's okay. <laughs> and early riser or night owl? Night owl for me, definitely. Okay, and if you are uh, choosing a movie, would it be a thriller or comedy? Comedy. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Hey, thanks for a couple of insights there. And we we know that the construction sector is phenomenally important to us as a as a country. You're front and centre of that uh, with the master builders, but you play a wider role as well. Can you just give us a bit of insight into how you think about the importance of the construction sector in New Zealand? Yeah, I think that we we don't remind ourselves sometimes just how important it is. I mean, it, it's a big employer, over a quarter of a million people directly employed in the construction industry. Significant impact on the economy, estimated about a $15 billion spend or 8% of GDP. But I think another way of thinking about it, it, it is literally the sector that builds our built environment. So whether that's our homes, the places we work, the schools, the hospitals, police station, recreation centres, the infrastructure, uh, the roads that connect us. So it's critical in terms of our economy, our employment. Also, it's part of the social fabric of New Zealand. And it's fundamentally important that we have a strong sector because it contributes to our quality of life. It does. And I, I think we've, you know, we have seen some challenges in the sector with organizations going into liquidation, et cetera. So we need the we need the sector to be profitable as well. How do we uh, make sure that that happens? So I think there's a there's a number of things we need to do. There's no question that we've got some challenges in the sector in terms of skills, the ability to attract, uh, retain and train people at all levels. It's not just at the trade level, but it's at the upper management level, it's project management, it's risk management and so on. So there's some significant challenges there, particularly at a time when our economy's got pretty full employment historically. So we're competing with others. We need to make sure that it's an attractive industry for people to come into and where they can see some exciting things that they can do with their careers. And there is a real pride from people in the sector, but that's not to hide away from the fact that we've got some problems at the moment and that we do need a bit of a reset in parts of the sector at least. Yeah, I think so. Recently in April, we saw the launch of the Construction Sector Accord by Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern. Can you give us a bit of background on what actually is the Accord about and then the Master Builders, what role did you play in the Accord? Yeah, well, firstly, I think it's a really positive opportunity and from Master Builders' point of view, we've been the supportive from the get-go. I think it's important that the industry can work constructively with government because there is so much of what they do, whether it's from a regulatory setting or through their own procurement, which directly mm -hmm impacts on the sector. So yes. we need to have a strong alignment. But it's more than that. It's also the sector working together as a sector. 
So I think, unfortunately, there has been an element of combativeness within the industry where contractors and subcontractors, consultants, legal advisors aren't working towards the same end. So the accord is an opportunity for us to say, hey, that's not actually helpful. And the first thing that the accord did uh, was say, look, we need a vision, which is not just a vision for the industry, but a vision for New Zealand. So it's, it's roughly saying that the work of the accord is to build a strong, productive sector that delivers on behalf of New Zealand. I think that's important and, and it's pretty hard to argue with that. If we all agree with that, whatever part we play, then that then helps to dictate how we behave. And it's the behavioural stuff and the attitudinal stuff that I think is the most important part of what we're trying to do with the accord. In that behavioural piece, what are maybe some things you've observed and that you'd like to see changed or modified going forward? Yeah, well, I'll I'll give you an example. We've been doing, um, in parallel from Master Builders, working with the Vertical Construction Leaders Group. So that's a group of 30 plus of the medium to large, um, largest construction companies in New Zealand. And while traditionally they're competitors with each other, they're working together to say, actually, we need to change some things ourselves. So, for instance, pushing back against some of the contract conditions that they're seeing being put out by clients or their advisors saying, actually, that's not reasonable and we would be foolish to agree to those terms. So that sort of behavioral change is starting to happen. Also, some discussion with that group about how do we improve the attractiveness to the industry and grow the talent pool rather than just stealing the best people off each other and paying a bit more. There's quite a bit of work to do on that one and that that will need to be a broader accord discussion but what I see with that group is that they're showing leadership. That's really encouraging and I've I've got a a lot of regard for the people that are involved in that particular group. And master builders specifically, how do you think you can help out in the accord and and with that leadership position in the industry? So I think we bring a couple of things. We do bring the voice of both commercial contractors and (laughs) residential contractors so so we understand the issues and we're able to bring to the table the views of our members as a contribution and one of the, the lenses in terms of what's going on in the construction sector. The other thing that I think we can do is that we've worked really hard over the last three or four years to try and have a whole of sector view. So we don't take a narrow parochial view that is just in the best interest of our members. Yes. We take the view that if the whole industry is not working well, then our members will suffer as well. So I think we can bring a, a more rounded view to the table, which hopefully is, uh, while it represents our members at one level, it also thinks more broadly about what's in the interests of the industry. Okay. And you've spoken about the uh, value of some of the people that are in, involved in the accord. Um, that's on the, I guess, on the construction sector side. What's your view of the engagement with government at the moment? So I, I guess the um, there's two things. You mentioned that the accord was signed by the Prime Minister, but actually there were, there were another five ministers that signed the accord on the, the day and another two uh, in addition, bringing it to seven other ministers who actually are uh, actively engaged in the accord and, and have signed up to it. That's unprecedented in my understanding, certainly in the construction sector. So that's a a powerful signal. On the Accord steering group, there are also several chief executives of government agencies. So they've made a personal commitment. And these are some of the agencies that do the largest amount of procurement in the construction sector. So that's, that's a really powerful commitment by them. And part of the accord is that we hold each other to account. So we can hold those chief executives and ministers. Likewise, they can hold us to account. I think that's a really healthy thing. And what I see around the table is people who are passionate about making improvements and lifting the performance of the sector. Okay, okay. And you mentioned the master builders, you have a wide and varied membership base from very large commercial construction through to, uh, you know, smaller residential builders. Yep. Uh, if I'm a carpenter with uh, an apprentice and a, and a leading hand, is the is the accord and what's being discussed at the table there, is that going to affect me? Will there be any trickle down? Should I be interested or concerned if, if that was my situation? I don't think you should be concerned. I actually see this as a great opportunity. And yes, it will apply across the whole sector. It's not just about the big construction companies or consultants. It is about the SMEs, the small to medium enterprises, because that is by far the bulk of the industry, as it is all industries, really. So there is a a very clear focus that we need to be thinking about the whole expanse of the industry and thinking about what tools we can put in place, what support we can put in 
marketplace to help the whole industry. Even outside of our own membership, for instance, I've had the opportunity to talk to the Specialist Trades Federation. I was invited to talk to, uh, I think it was 13 members of that, representing the likes of plumbers and painters and electricians and so on. And it was a great conversation, and it's about breaking down the us and them. And I think that's a start, and I think that then flows through into behaviours. So for our members, it's saying... If they want to be treated fairly by their clients, then that behaviour has to also be replicated in their relationships with the subcontractors. So that's, I think this is important to everyone in the industry, quite frankly. Absolutely. Uh, I don't know if you saw it last night, Dave, there was a great article on the news about a uh, female apprentice plumber last night. Um, did you did you see that? No, I didn't see that. Uh, really good story in a whole whole number of ways. The girl was a teenage teenage mum. Um, she'd been a, offered a, a place in a, a, a plumbing apprenticeship as a as a female. She was definitely a minority, and she was also a, an ethnic minority in there. And uh, what she brought into that environment was just brilliant. And I thought it was such a great uh, piece about just what opportunities there are available for, you know, all genders, all races in the trades. And, uh, you know, she was, she was raving about the opportunity that it was going to present for her and her children's future because she'd invested in a uh, gaining qualification in the trade. It was great. And I think that's a great example, but we've got a lot of work to do to to attract that diversity. And I think the diversity brings a lot of strength because you've got people with different skills, different thinking. Mm. And I think the other part of that is the industry will continue to change and evolve. So the use of technology, for instance, is something that I think is starting to sort of infiltrate in a whole lot of ways. For instance, in commercial construction, people using uh, drones to do some of their site inspections rather than having to get people up and down on cranes. Mm-hmm. But that's a different skill, and that will that will attract different people. I don't think we're good at telling people that story yet. Mm-hmm. So there is a piece of work which is not directly within the Accord at this stage, but through the Construction Industry Council. They've done a little bit of work around how to improve our communication and directly thinking about industry attractiveness and who are the target audiences, how do we get the young people How do we get back into the schools? What is happening in the education system? And how do we understand that and use that in a way Mm -hmm. that people can see this is actually a really interesting, creative and satisfying industry to be involved in. And there's all sorts of things you can do. Okay. What what are a couple of those things you think we could do at that uh, early stage engagement? A little bit of out of, out of left field, but at the end of last week, I went to Melbourne with a group of people looking at how they train people in the state of Victoria. There's a lot of very interesting things that they do there. But in conversation with the other people, they said, actually, one of the things that could be simple into schools is explaining how do cities actually work? How does traffic work or not work in the case of Auckland? How do, how do the communications work? What happens to the water when you flush it down the toilet how do you you get water into your house how does all of that work and that's actually quite simple it can be done in a diagrammatic form can be done in a game form simple things like that that aren't necessarily expensive but get people at an earlier age to say that's really interesting and I'd, i'd like to know a bit more about that absolutely yeah Absolutely fascinating. Uh, and we're all these things that we take for granted, don't we? But uh, yeah. with a little bit of insight, you go, oh, wow, how does that work? And I think that title, How Do Cities Work, is actually quite a, a good way of thinking about it. Um, now, as part of the Accord, uh, you mentioned the government agencies that are responsible for some of the big infrastructure projects going on in the, in the country. What should the Master Builders members uh, in the constructing community, what, what should they be trying to understand about those projects? Yeah, I think, so that's a, that is a really good initiative from the government is to have a forward-looking pipeline of work to publish that and to be clear about the processes for proceeding and, and procurement. I think for um, for our members who are interested in that, they, they should go on to the government website through uh, the Infrastructure Transactions Unit at the moment, which will become the Infrastructure Commission. See what's coming up, look at the work that you're interested in and get involved. Make sure that you're ready and, and it should help you plan your own work. Mm-hmm. And it may well be that there are groups of companies that want to work together with the, the foresight of what might be coming down the track that gives people time and the opportunity to talk to others and say, look, we probably can't do it on our own, 
but is this something that we might form a consortium or a JV to do? So I would encourage people to look at that, be aware of it, and it helps a lot with uh, planning of what's coming up. If one of the members was looking at those projects going, oh, there's a bit of that that I would like to do, but I'm probably not big enough to try and take on the, the whole piece myself, I would like to be part of a consortium. Who could they talk to or how could they engage with master builders to try and connect with other people to do that? Yeah, they, so they could either talk to their local executive uh, and see who else is around in that particular mm-hmm. locality, or if it's a national one and they think they'd like to be involved, they could always come through to us uh, at Master Builders and say, look, I'm interested. Is there any process? Deficient interest, we can help put people together. Okay. Excellent. Now, I know advocating with government is definitely one of the key roles of uh, Master Builders and and certainly your role. David, can you, uh, we've talked about the Accord, but can you give us a wider view of how Master Builders helps advocate in with government? Yeah, so we're involved, as you say, in the Accord, but we're also engaged in other ad hoc groups or permanent groups. So I'm the current chair of the Construction Industry Council uh, due to step down shortly, and that's a group of industry associations. We're also involved in the Construction Strategy Group, which which um, has a different lens in terms of what's happening in the construction mm-hmm. sector. We meet regularly with various ministers. So an example of that more recently with the vocational education reforms, I, along with my colleagues from plumbers and electricians, met with the Minister mm-hmm. of Education to talk about mm-hmm. our view as representatives of employers. So we engage in a constructive way in any area that we think is important to the construction industry. And that can be with politicians. We work closely with government agencies uh, and with others across the whole sector. Superb. And how is the voice of the frontline construction members, how is that reaching through master builders? I mean, we are, I think we understand that uh, you can take that voice through to the to government and ministers, et cetera, but how do you look to get the voice from the front line? Yeah, we do, do it in a number of ways. So we have two working groups. One's a commercial working group and the other's a residential working group. So we use that them as a sounding board for what's happening in their part of the sector. The local executives around the country are really important because they understand at a regional level what's going on and they are able to bring forward, and they do bring forward, the concerns of their members. And a couple of times a year, we get all of those presidents together and we go through a range of things. We also have a periodic update by teleconference with the regional presidents Mm. and then we also um, in in a range of other ways we have staff around the country field staff and office staff who are very close to what's going on. So we have a whole range of mechanisms. And, and on a personal level, we also run roadshows from time to time on particular issues, and that's another way of engaging more directly with people. Great. And I've personally seen uh, the use of member surveys and engagement to get that, that voice coming yep. through as well. And you know, really, uh, that range of tools and the range of ways that members can connect and uh, join in the collective voice is really, really a great thing about the Master Builders. Absolutely. And, and we're constantly thinking about how do we do that better? Because it's a, a, a you never stop, do you? You, you never finish that task. Mm-hmm. But we've also, as you say, done surveys. And right at the end of last year, we did some work on our brand, for instance, understanding what consumers made of the brand. And it was very, very heartening in terms of people's knowledge of master builders, the way they regarded us. But there are also some areas that we need to keep working on and, and a couple of particular areas that I won't share now. We're rolling out over the next little period of time. Excellent. Look forward to seeing those. Um, now we've got a constructive forum coming up in September. Um, what is the constructive forum and how will you be participating? Yes, yeah, so constructive is something that we started in 2016 and it's going away from the traditional members conference. As I was saying earlier, we take the view that we need to work across the industry. So we had a go at, at setting up a, a whole of industry forum and it was successful and this will be the fourth. And I think what we've seen through that is that there is a, a real thirst from across the sector that they share knowledge and, and people want to hear from other people and participate. So that's what we've tried to do and have been successful at. This year, we're directly linking it back to the Accord, but also thinking about what are the things that are starting to change in a positive way. Last year, a lot of it was we'd had some failures at firms and the discussion was understanding what was going on. Now we need to actually move further and we have moved further forward and saying, now, these are the things that need to change, and this is what's already changing. i reference back the Vertical Construction Leaders Group uh, is one that's working, and there are, there's a piece of work we're doing right now that we'll be talking about at Constructive, which is on the 12th of September at 
Papa. We'll be talking a bit about the work of the Accord and picking up on a couple of themes there, particularly around management of risk and uh, what we need to do in terms of lifting education and skills. So we've got people from across the sector and we don't have speakers giving long talks. We don't have professional presenters. What we have found is that people want to hear from the leaders in the industry. Absolutely. And the idea of panel discussions rather than a single person talking for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. But we also want to have a bit of debate. We want people to challenge those ideas. And we want really to get people thinking about how do they participate, not just in constructive, but how do they participate in change in the industry? So that's our focus. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of work goes into it, but yeah. I think uh, I hope people make the effort to come along because what we've heard in the past is people have got an awful lot out of it. Great. And the members conference follows on straight yeah. after constructive. What's the what's the theme of the members conference this year? Yeah, so the members day on the 13th of September is around how do you build great teams. Our mission statement, if, if you like, there's a couple of ways of thinking about it is how do we help our members build better businesses, but also how do we help our members build a better New Zealand? Mm -hmm. And that's not done by individuals. It's done with teams. It's done with good businesses. So the focus is how do you build a good team? What are the elements you need to take? What are the steps you need to take? And how will you know when you've got a good team? And we've uh, seen with many, many members the uh, investment in people and growing great teams. It, it pays so many great dividends over the medium and long term. Um, and yep. it's a constant effort from leaders in any business to uh, grow and develop your people. But if they invest that time and, and effort, and our partnership with Master Builders members, we've got a whole host of uh, tools and resources that members can use, particularly on the Elevate platform. We've yep. got uh, tools and courses in there about growing a, a dream team how to have difficult conversations uh, there's a host of resources so uh, yeah would absolutely encourage the members to get along to the uh, members day um, and also make the use of the uh, other tools that you know, master builders office yeah and the, and the partnership we've had with the breakthrough company has been a fantastic one and the feedback we get from people that engage in that online learning which is easily absorbed it doesn't take a lot of time it's available to our members free of charge and all of their staff if we've got their emails the feedback we get is tremendous the issue is people just making some time correct and that's that's part of the message isn't it so busy working in the business that they don't often take the time just to step back and say, well, how is the business going and mm -hmm. how do I take that next step? And also, how do I, as you say, invest in my teams, but look after myself at the same time? Absolutely, David, spot on. Um, in closing, David, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that you personally and master builders and the various uh, groups are doing in the construction sector. You know, if you were to project forward, say, three years, what would you see, uh, like to see as some really obvious changes in the industry in that period of time? I think it's that sense of working together as a whole industry. Because I think as much as I've talked about the vision, that doesn't just happen overnight. And so what I'd like to see, and like to see in particular from our members, is that, is that we're seeing as leading the way in terms of the way we behave. I'd like to see some business making more profits because some parts of the sector do actually need to make better margins. Only through that, that they can invest back into their people, invest into their systems, their infrastructure, that'll deliver on behalf of New Zealand. But particularly, I guess, it's that behaviour change and working together on behalf of New Zealand. Well, David, I'd like to uh, commend you personally and also master builders for the work that you're doing, corralling people, government, industry, bring all those uh, parties together and, and getting progress is not an easy task. And uh, I've certainly been fortunate enough to observe a lot of the great work that you and master builders are doing. So on behalf of uh, the industry, having come from a construction family myself, really appreciate what you and master builders are doing. Good job. Thank you, Ryan. It's a pleasure. Okay, talk to you next time. Thanks very much.